Look who I am here. Look who I am here. Hi, everybody. Leather Rock here, and this is Tabby Boy. Welcome to my channel. Oh, boy. So, how is everybody doing today? I want you to know something. A couple hours ago, I actually filmed another video so that I would have something else for people, just in case, for some reason, I didn't feel like going live today. But I am live today, and right now I'm going to pull the plug so I can back up some. I want to talk about some things. One of the things that's been on my mind besides this COVID business is Thanksgiving. And I don't know about you guys, but I really don't feel that much like celebrating. It's not that I don't feel like I have things to be grateful for. Of course I do. I'm grateful I still have my mom. I'm grateful I still have my cats. I'm grateful I still have a roof over my head. Uh, it would be nice if more of the bills were paid, but that unfortunately is not through any lack of effort on my part. Uh, and I could go into my living situation, my roommates, my family, and I can get into certain things going on with my brother and stuff, but that's not going to help anything. I, you know, you guys don't come to my channel for negativity, and I would rather not put out negativity. But I really don't feel like celebrating this year. So much of it is due to the not being able to uh, have human contact because the Centers for Disease Control basically says that we have to stay away from everybody. Every other human being has cooties and we can't be exposed to cooties because everybody's all of a sudden the enemy because of this silent killer that lurks among us. And if you hug your friend, if you touch somebody, uh, hold somebody's hand, uh, and they don't live in your household, there is this big risk thing. And it's messing with everybody's heads. You can't look at anybody and feel totally as warm as you want to because there's that ever-present danger. And there's going to be psychological ramifications for this for years to come, especially for kids. I, I cannot even imagine how it must be to be a parent and have to teach your children, especially the young ones, all these safety precautions. And if they're of school age and it's safe to go to school, you have to worry about what they're doing and if they're bringing this silent killer home. If it's teenagers, that's definitely not net natural to socially isolate. Uh, but whether you have children or not, this whole thing, even okay, if you only have to think of yourself, you can't go to clubs. Hi, Mark. Hey. Oh, you keep on changing your, uh, Jeff, you keep on changing your, I, I'm glad you're putting your name on your channel. Why people don't put their names on channels, I don't know. I would like to think that it's our personalities as much as our content that people high five uh, are into. So even though I know some people don't put their names on channels for safety purposes, but you know, trying to be grateful for a really weird situation that's going on in the world. And I know that I'm probably a sore loser because I'm really unhappy about what's going on with the presidential election. Even though these people keep on saying, have faith, have faith, have faith. I'm sorry. If you're coming to somebody's channel for faith, I'm not going to help you because, uh, you know what they say about people being older, sadder, and wiser? Well, if you know enough about life, it's really hard to have faith. I have faith in myself. I have faith in my cats. Of course, one of the things I don't have faith in is my cats not making messes because I'm always cleaning up after their messes. Yeah. But Thanksgiving... The whole so many things that we associate with this holiday, uh, and it shouldn't be about eating a whole bunch of food, shoveling it in, especially if you want to keep your um, trim figure, you know. And it's kind of like people say, "Do you?" Somebody says, "Would you like to go to a buffet?" Well, buffets are fine, but it's just food. This fancy food the casinos offer, yes, it's white. Very delightful. I can attest to that. But in the end of the day, it is just food. 
these people that are getting in these long lines. Uh, earlier today, they had a turkey giveaway. And we don't have a turkey. I kind of thought of going there, but then I thought, you know what, they're not going to be able to enforce social distancing. It's probably going to be, well, it was, it happened today. It's probably quite the madhouse. Uh, I, I thought to myself, well, say I wore a MAGA hat. Was there a chance that something would happen? Okay, what are you doing? Uh-oh, you know what? I better check what Tabby Boy is doing. I think he's digging at something. And, you know, he likes to get bad. What are you doing? Tabby Boy. Hello, what are you doing? Do you want to see what he's up to? Let's see what he's up to. Oh, excuse me. Tabby Boy, let's see your face. Let's see that face. Oh, there. Tabby Boy, show everybody your face. What you doing? Hey, I know what you're doing. You're going to claw and claw and claw and try to open the door. And if I ignore you and I don't open the door, then you're going to get into mischief. And if I continue to ignore you, you are going to pee on something. That's what the cat does. Tabby boy, what? Am I supposed to let you out? Am I supposed to open the door? He wants me to open the door. You know what? I think I will just to keep him from rebelling. There. Go. Goodbye. Bastard. <sighs> they're such... They're like petulant children, aren't they? But we love them. At least you should. So, so Thanksgiving is on Thursday. And I have a real... Yeah, he's a good cat. At least he doesn't go beating up on... Well, actually, when Ace was alive, he was very mean to Ace. And so Cassie is mean to him. Would you guys like to see Cassie? She's asleep and she's deaf, so it's real easy to sneak up to her. But hello, oh, who's this? Who's it? Cassie, who's that pretty girl? Who's that pretty girl? Oh, my baby. My baby, my baby. Oh, I'll, I'll get you later. I'll get you. So Thanksgiving's coming up, and it's really hard to feel enthusiasm for it. Now, it wasn't too long ago when my mother was working at the Trump Taj Mahal. If you know anybody that works in the casino industry, you know that they rarely have holidays off. So a lot of times we celebrated the day before, because her days off of work was usually Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And we would have any pretense of a holiday meal. Of course, in our family, as weird as it is, I don't live with Ozzy and Harriet. Uh, Christmas is always weird. If you've ever seen any of my Christmas videos, you may have observed that usually my mother and I would be the one to be in dealing with the gifts. Hi, hey, Cher, how you doing? Uh, but my brother would hang out in the hallway. He will not be in the same room with me. You know, That's how civilized people live. And apparently we're not civilized people. We're not a civilized family. Uh, we were growing up with my dad and my mom and my brother and myself. It was like that ever since my brother, well, my brother is like almost eight years younger than me. So it was normal for a while. Why it isn't now, it's, it's a shame. But so holidays are always weird. And usually what my brother does, he has lots of friends who have cars and families and cats and dogs and stuff and they all think he's great maybe he is in some ways just we don't think each other is great but he usually goes off and hangs out with his friends and their families whether that's going to happen this year in the age of covid i don't know but he my brother goes off all the time he's out bowling right now he has no lack of a social life he has no lack of human contact with people and he's got some exciting irons in the fire, which I shouldn't even get into because he sure wouldn't promote my projects. But let's just say he has some opportunities that I do hope he avails himself of. And I know he's not going to use it to escape Atlantic City because he has no reason or desire to ever leave here. Uh, he's never been more than three miles away from mom and dad. He's never felt the need to go exploring the country 
or whatever. And I'm not going to judge him on that, even though I don't understand it. Because let's face it, there's plenty of my life that he doesn't understand. He certainly doesn't respect the fact that I made my hair purple, changed my name, did all these things. And yeah, he seems to be acting more and more showbiz, which I think is quite interesting. But like I said, I'm not going to fail to at least intellectually support my family. But I still think it's ironic that so many of the very things that he thought funny of me, aspects to my personality and my goals and my dreams, and he's doing not the same things, but they're similar in that they're things that are in the public eye. Uh, one of the bigger differences between he and I as far as our showbiz things that we're doing locally is that he sees himself as somewhat of a spokesman for this town. And he has attracted the attention of some people, I guess, in New York City. I don't know if they're DJs or they're other vloggers or podcasters or what. But he seems to have gotten on the radar of some influential people um, and maybe even some people in the pro wrestling world. Not like WWE, which used to be WWF, but some other smaller regional wrestling networks. Not that my brother is a wrestler, even though he could be, he's over six feet tall. He certainly has the image. Um, but wrestling, even though it's choreographed ahead of time and it's plotted out, it still involves a lot of pain. There was maybe five minutes of my life that I even considered going into training for it. That was before there was a whole lot of female wrestlers, but there are so many aspects to uh, women's wrestling uh, image that I could never uh, live up to. It's not the physical fitness that I'm afraid of. I have no problem with lifting weights, even though I haven't really been into it. Like uh, there was like a three year stretch of time that I was kind of hardcore, but I've fallen off so much and I do feel kind of ashamed of that. But I don't think that there's room in the world for a flat chested uh, female wrestler. It, you just don't see them, that they don't have, you know, that's just the way it is. But uh, as far as valet goes, I was a valet for a wrestler that's been dead for years. And I'm sure none of you guys have ever heard of him. But he his wrestling name was Captain Scorpio. And this was in Hollywood. And it was, I won't even say the year because, you know, it's not going to help my image any. But he and I were friends. We were both sleeping in our cars back in the day. This is before I had gotten any acting work or modeling work in Los Angeles. Well, I'd done a little bit of modeling work, but hadn't started the acting yet. Uh, I don't even think I was a stage dancer when I knew him and I did this. And we were uh, at some matches in uh, the Olympic Auditorium. And the Olympic Auditorium is quite a storied building in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, KISS did some of their uh, rock videos there. And in fact, if you know anything about the band, and I know at least one of you guys does, uh, there was, uh, they did the video for Crazy Crazy Nights, and I happened to be an extra in that, and I got to hang out with Eric Carr afterwards. And I'd already known him through the Rainbow Bar and Grill. And if you are a Hollywood person or ever were a Hollywood person, and you hung out with uh, rappers or rock stars or uh, actors or other kinds of musicians. Rainbow Bar and Grill is a very important place. It's still kind of nice. Well, he should. Eric Carr, let me tell you about Eric. And I, and I didn't know that I was going to end up talking about this on this live stream. Uh, but th though these stories are nice, but Eric Carr was a very, very, very nice human being. He was humble, he was kind, he had time for the fans. And I remember when I was first trying to get up the uh, guts to talk to him, I because I was always conscious of the fact that I had this really sleazy, trashy, aesthetic image. Well, I'm not saying I thought it was sleazy, but there are many people that did think it was. Uh, when you walk around dressing like a, a stripper, you gotta expect that not everybody's gonna respect that. And unfortunately, some of the people that maybe you respect and admired and have for many years, they might not always be kind or assume the best of you, even though you would like to think that they would see you as a fellow artist. 
Uh, back in those days, I never thought of myself as a musician. I only knew a handful of chords. I certainly didn't like my voice. I knew that I had great strengths as a dancer and as an artist and definitely as a writer. Uh, but one of the first things I thought I was going to do when I went, when I ended up in Hollywood is I thought that I was going to be doing something with my writing and with my art, but I wasn't really sure. I didn't have very, very feel, very strong plans. I just figured that I would go there and I would do what was fun. And I knew that I wanted to be in the sunset strip scene. And I did achieve those goals, but I would like to think that if I had uh, more finely tuned my dreams, but I, I just figured that if I had vague ideas of what I wanted, then I would find something within those parameters. And since I had come to California after having been a security guard in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and I got that job because my father got me the job. So as a result, I didn't realize that it was not going to be so easy just finding work. And I ended up doing some telemarketing stuff uh, before I discovered stripping and how much fun it was. And uh, imagine being a almost G-rated flat-chested stripper in Hollywood. That was That was my jam. And I had so much fun. I cannot even begin to tell you there is no such thing as lap dancing, or at least if there was, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about that till I found myself in Phoenix, Arizona. And the first time I heard about it, I was quite horrified. I totally had Im imaginations of it, but it's not what it was. I thought it involved standing in slow heels and causing a great deal of pain. And that's not what it is. Uh, when I ended up in San Francisco, I had a friend who I had known from Los Angeles that actually was working doing that. She was working at a place called the Mitchell Brothers Theater. Now, this is if, if any of you are under 18, you should probably cover your ears. Mitchell Brothers were two brothers that were pornographers, and they had this dance theater. Uh, it still exists, I believe, in uh, San Francisco. One of the brothers killed the other, though, so... I think the one, well, the dead one, obviously, is not there. But the one that did it may very well still be in prison. Uh, they even made a made-for-TV movie about it, but which I found really interesting having, uh, I thought of going there to dance until, of course, I found out about the lap dance thing. But when I first really heard about what lap dancing was, uh, this girl told me she basically, after she got off stage, she said she just crawled around. She made it like she crawled around through the audience sitting in guys' laps or something, which I just thought was the most horrific thing. I mean, there are things that are worse, but it seemed pretty scuzzy and skeezy. And I don't know how she was able to stomach doing what she was doing. I imagine money had to have something to do with it, but I just don't understand and I'm not a funny daddy and I'm not a goody two shoes, even though some people may beg to differ, but I just, certain things are not within my comfort level. And it's not that I'm passing judgment, but though maybe I am. There's just certain things just don't feel like they're the right thing to do. If you cannot um, have a good time just being on stage where people don't, aren't able to grab you or whatever, or if they do touch you, it's only to put money in your stocking. And that's hardly a sleazy thing. And I figure if, if that gives us that person an opportunity to say, well, yes, I actually did put my hand on her, even though it was just to put money uh, in a uh, in one of their items of clothing. And, and I hardly see any harm in that. Uh, but no, Hollywood was a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, but I never did any dancing of that nature in New Jersey. There was one... Christmas vacation, I came back here, and this was obviously when my father was still alive, and there was a place, I don't remember the name of it, but it had these tiny little booths that you go in, they were about the size of a telephone booth, and they had a two-way mirror that went back, uh, went from, I guess, head height to, like, knee height, and, and it had uh, a phone that had a cord on it, and you could talk to the person on the other end ostensibly so the the guy watching could tell you what he wanted to see and I thought that was really a mind fuck I lasted three days there I could tell you I made a grand total of 88 dollars for three days work 
and no, it was on Atlantic Avenue. It was I, um, it's I if it's still there, and I think it's still there. Uh, it's on the corner of Atlantic in Illinois. Illinois Avenue is now called Martin Luther King, but I still call it Illinois Avenue. I don't care. You don't come to my channel for me to be politically correct, and if you do, you're going to be holding your breath and waiting a very long time. But you guys know that. But anyway, I could only last three days here. First of all, I kept on imagining what if my father ha happened to walk in here or one of his friends. And uh, but, and they paid you by tokens, and I think the house got half of anything. So anyway, I made $88 for three days' work, and it was messing with my head so much. It was literally, I couldn't sleep. It was just, I don't want to say it was traumatizing me, but it was giving me that. It, it was just, I felt that it was wrong. And if something feels wrong, then obviously for you, it is wrong. Uh, so anyway, and I never could find a place that uh, did not take tips, that make us give tips, uh, which I think is so wrong. These businesses that make you give, say, 10% of your tips to another employee there. If I'm going to give a percentage of my tips to anybody, it's going to be the IRS. It's not going to be some other employee. To me, that's just being pimped out. I, you know, it's not right. And most, almost all the places that I dance in, in Los Angeles did not have those kind of shenanigans. The one place that I did work that they made us do that was, uh, and it still does exist. It's called Jumbo's Clown Room. And that place in theory was a lot of fun. It was like a bikini bar and uh, had a pole. And I didn't start out knowing how to work any pole or anything. It was just, I'm an actual dancer. The poles actually just, it's an accessory. It's, I guess, to make up for the fact that the stage might not be big enough to really have a lot of room to dance in. But the thing that bothered me about it is this was when smoking was still was still legal in clubs and bars and stuff. And, yeah, maybe that was it. But it was, they had all these signs saying that smoking was illegal in the state of California and it had this toll-free number that you can call and report it. And there's no way that I could snitch off my place of business because I had made the mistake of complaining to the people that were running the place because I really cannot tolerate cigarette smoke indoors. It really makes me feel physically ill and I don't like the smell. And, you know, come on, you don't like something, you don't like something. And I, in between when I was dancing, I mean, when I'm on stage, there's no greater high than being on stage as far as I'm concerned. But when you were off stage, you were expected to sit and hang around and socialize with the customers. And when I was off stage, my face was in my notebook. I was writing poetry or analytical essays. Um, some of those, some of that poetry uh, I'm working with now doing things with. Because really poetry in and of itself, really, who pays attention to poetry there are some people that do appreciate poetry, but for the most part, unless you do something with it, like set it to music or something, really, you it should be good for something. Besides, the, the creation of poetry can be very cathartic, especially if it's in response to some kind of hardship or some kind of abuse, uh, which is most of the poetry that I have um, is was as a result of either things like domestic violence or homelessness or observations about different kinds of drugs or observations about how people feel about drugs or just different things about uh, urban life because, well, that's, that's, those were my inspirations. I, my, I've never been a hearts and flowers and sweetness and lollipops kind of person. That's not realistic and that's at least not realistic for me anyway. But I'm so glad that I have 95% of the journals that I kept during those times. And I wish I could say that I was writing steadily now, but I'm just, I'm not. The only time I write a lot is when I'm traveling. And like when I was in Washington, D.C. And I'm still full of so many misgivings about wanting to travel and this COVID making it very unsafe to do so. And yet people are still doing it. People are still going to marches and demonstrations and uh, Antifa is still beating up Trump supporters. There's still places that I know would be absolutely unsafe for me to go. Portland is top on that list, probably Seattle too. And I've been to Portland before. I spent a week there 
when I was living in San Francisco, some of my Los Angeles friends had actually moved up to Portland and they invited me up there and uh, I had a really good time there. Portland, well, Oregon, there's no state sales tax and uh, Port uh, Oregon has one thing in common with the state of New Jersey. We're the only two states where you cannot legally pump your own gas. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, and, and uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, a lot of people that ride the freight trains go there and there's a lot of punk rockers there and probably a lot of goths too. But there's so many Trump haters and Democrats there that I honestly don't think I would be safe. They, they killed Trump supporters there. Uh, so, um, hi, Carolyn, how are you doing? Um, just so you guys know, this is not that organized a stream but it's hopefully not going to be as disorganized as the last one. The last stream, I felt that it was kind of lacking and I, I did kind of, I don't know if I really apologized, but I just, I don't want to post things just to post. I want to post things that are of, that are of quality. I want to post things that are teaching and entertaining and interesting and worth it. So, but... In the same token, this COVID thing, it is really, oh, well, well I'm glad you, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you tuned in. I'm glad that I am finding a time that uh, is fairly convenient for people. I know that I have viewers from all over the world and being that that's the case you got to deal with the different time zones and it's really interesting that because some people are night owls it could be in the wee hours where they are and it's convenient i tend to feel more alert late at night too even though i kind of have to be a morning person for some things i thought that i was going to go and get some groceries today and i found out that no that's tomorrow so um I'm usually, when you're a YouTuber, well, I can't speak for all YouTubers, obviously. I don't even know very many YouTubers, but I know for myself, YouTube is practically my top priority. Well, actually, my cats and my mother and their safety are my top priority. But aside from that, YouTube is really up there. I consider that my job. Uh, and then I have my quote unquote day job, which consists of a whole bunch of work and home sites and survey taking and all this kind of bullshit. And that is, <coughs> it's okay. It's, it's convenient for me because at least I get paid in a way. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, Damn. Well, I guess it, I, I can only imagine that must really leave a bad taste in your mouth whenever you hear anything about Portland on the news. I, I'm almost ready to say, I mean, because so many businesses have been destroyed and I, I'm tempted to say all you good people get the hell out and somebody just drop some bombs on it or something. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that, but you know what? I just, I, I'm kind of like Trump in that, there's things I want to say, and rather than let somebody else speak for me and interpret things and possibly censor me, it's better to just hear things straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, so, damn that! What a what a dumber. Uh, so, so it's almost Thanksgiving, and people have to decide whether or not to celebrate. I cannot believe that there are some parts of the United States where they actually are having curfews and they're telling people that they must stay in. I can see if they're expecting riots. I remember when the Rodney King riots were in Los Angeles and I was there. And at the time I was living with a very abusive person and I, I shouldn't be afraid to talk about this person. He's dead. I was told that he was murdered in Las Vegas, that he'd owed too many people money and owed the wrong person. And I was told not to worry my pretty little head about it. And since he was an abusive bastard, I'm not, but uh, I, I mean, he was the kind of person that he wouldn't let me drive my own car. Okay. 
and he had a coast to coast public access uh, TV show. And he's somebody that even auditioned to be a, uh, a drummer for Kiss. But I know that Gene and Paul wouldn't put up with his uh, macho attitude of lack of cooperation and um, and probably his drug use may have been a turn off to Gene and Paul or not him use. And I think after dealing with Peter, Chris, they wanted people who would be team players and not give them a headache. And I could totally see why they hired Eric Carr, who is a heck of a nice person, easy to get along with, team player, calm. From what I knew of him, he didn't have any serious vices. And by serious, I mean, he didn't, whatever he may have done, was not to the level of being problematic. So I never saw him shit faced drunk. I just saw him uh, happy and sweet. And when I hung out with him, uh, like, like, okay, I'm, I know I'm being very disorganized here. And, and, and I haven't smoked any weed today because I don't have any, you know. Uh, but how I got the courage to talk to Eric Carr was I asked him a question about United States copyright law. I figured if I asked him something intellectual, then maybe it would make up for the fact that I was wearing a tiny little mini skirt and garter belt and fishnet stockings and high heels and all that stuff, which nothing about my appearance has changed any from those days, except I don't tease my hair up as much as I used to. Uh, and partly the only reason why I don't do get as elaborate with my hair is because around here, it's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. And plus, if my hair was all big, can you imagine how hard it would be to hide my hair under a hat hiding from these gangs? You know, I mean, at least with hair like this, I can go and stick it under a hat. I put the face mask on and then I can I can actually hide under my big N95 face mask. Right. And I could put a knit hat on so low, I could actually run around with no makeup on. Totally, you'd never know it was me. I could slip in and out, do what I need to do. And uh, my natural hair color, I'm a redhead. You like my natural? Yeah, now it's not as bright as it was when I was like in second grade. I think it started getting dull. Well, it was bright even when I was in high school. And I have been... I started bleaching my hair blonde when I was 15. And of course I didn't even do it the right way. I used normal peroxide that you use for cuts and things. And uh, it's fairly similar to the hair dye that my mother uses. You should see my mother's hair now. It is so gray. And she needs another cut before she colors it. And I'm holding her to her promise that she's going to let me dye her hair on camera. Um, and I hope you guys don't think that I am disrespecting her when I ambush her and I deliberately sneak her on video and stuff. I mean, I think from a vlogging standpoint, it's cool because I know everybody likes to see people's parents, and especially if your parents are old. That's a charming thing, especially and I know there's people who don't have their parents anymore. And when they see people who still have their parents, it gives them that wistful thing. And I know that my mother is considered very charming by a lot of people at least that's what I, I hear in the comments and stuff so and vlogging is appealing to a lot of people because it gets you a chance to see people more as they really are as they really live imperfections and all and even though I try to film the neatest parts of the house and sometimes I the camera shakes or I, I move the computer in such a way and then you see messes that I wish you didn't see and guess what I'm human I'm not perfect maybe it makes you guys feel better or those of you that keep the house beautiful and you see that some of us don't have beautiful houses and maybe you get that feeling of satisfaction ah my house is much neater than that youtubers I don't know whatever it is that humanizes us and makes people happy you know whatever I mean it is what it is I can't I don't have the editing chops or I didn't uh, to go and take out parts and fix them up. I just recently learned how to trim parts off of individual sections so that I can, is it? Oh, thank you. I feel better. I mean, I wish if I could cast 
a deslobification spell on myself, believe me, I would. Because uh, first of all, it would look a lot better. And sometimes when I'm looking for something, I make it 10 times as messy just trying to find things. And it's really frustrating. And of course, it's a good excuse not to bring invite friends over because you're so embarrassed. It The mess is you don't want anybody to see it. And that's a really good excuse to keep the social distancing and stuff, you know. But back to Thanksgiving. How can we celebrate this holiday right now? How can we celebrate any holidays? And maybe more importantly, say we get through this, are these uh, Democratic governors in these blue states going to say for Christmas, you can't have people over? How much more is the public going to take? I mean, I can understand public safety. I can understand quelling the spread of a disease, but people, our livelihoods are being destroyed. Let me tell you about Atlantic County, which is where Atlantic City, New Jersey is. I just heard some statistics on talk radio that Atlantic County has the nation's highest unemployment rate. Um, I hope that's not true. I don't know I, I can only do so much vetting of the sources I hear. Like if I'm hearing a bunch of statistics from talk radio, I'm not going to, I might go on a few other websites, but I'm not going to invest hours and hours in researching to see how true something is. You know, I think I better plug this back in because I'm down to 70% power and I don't want to get distracted and have it be too low. So anyway, the public is getting sick and tired of, being told that they cannot be open for business. And look what's happening in Pennsylvania now. Did you not guys know, maybe anybody that's on the club scene at all knows that the day, the night before Thanksgiving is considered a big club night. Um, and that, that's true for here in Atlantic City too. Well, in Pel Pennsylvania, maybe just in Philadelphia, but I think in the whole state of Pennsylvania, they are outlawing uh, liquor store or club sales from 5 p.m. through you know, all, all, all Wednesday night. You can't party. Um, I don't know if that means the liquor stores are closed to and I don't have a dog in this hunt because I don't drink anymore. But the whole idea that for the bar and restaurant industry that is so seriously hard hit by this pandemic, one of the big party nights of the year, which might help them, might help their bottom line, they are forbidden to be open. You know, and so I got, so maybe this is going to keep people from, I know when you're drinking, you cannot remember to social distance. And the whole point of being out, how can you social distance and be out? Anyway, the whole point of my going out, if I want to go out dancing, if I want to go to a club, if I want to see a band, yes, I want to see the band. I want to see the club. I want to dance. The whole point of going out and getting dressed up I thought is see and be seen. Every time I go and I'm thinking, maybe this will be the time that I might meet somebody special. I'm also thinking maybe I might meet somebody that I can give one of my hand drawn up business cards to that might see that I'm talented and maybe uh, give me some kind of a job opportunity. Or maybe I might meet some special somebody that might be more than a friend. Could happen. Maybe never in New Jersey, but could happen. Or maybe I might just meet a new friend. But with COVID, we're all treating each other like, you have cooties, I have to stay away from you. I have to stay six feet away from you. Well, you have to stay so far away from people, you can't tell if you find them attractive or not. And everybody's wearing these masks. You can hardly see their faces. And, and now that I understand in New Jersey, they're starting to have some clubs having some kind of seating like concert, they call them concerts that are have much lower capacity. But then what are you going to do? How are you going to enforce social distancing? Are you going to have five seats in between people? How are you going to ascertain? How are you going to ascertain the, the people that are arriving if they are households? When there's two people, how do you know that they're just get, dating, but they don't live together or they're dating and they're living together? Uh, so some people can be up close to each other because you have some kind of proof that they are they live in a household. But other people, 
they have to stay far away, even though they know each other. Uh oh, I hear cat fight. Wait, let's go. Follow me into the hallway. I have to do this real careful because I have a lamp balanced on here and I've already broken two lights. I don't want to break this one. All right. Ooh, oh, look what I see. What's what's going on here? Oh, crap. I wanted to show you. Oh. All right. What's going on? What's going on? Cassie. What's going on? Tabby boy, what's going on? Come on. Hey. Psst, come on. Tabby boy, come here. Come here. Oh. Tabby boy, what you doing? Come on. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? I'm going to get out of the hallway. I don't want to get my brother on camera. Frankly, I don't think he wanted to be on my channel anyway. So, yeah. So the whole point to me of going, oh, don't, that's a hell of an attitude. Jeff, you're not exactly uh, over the hill at all. Come on. That, that's, don't, don't be like that. Now you're making me depressed. I mean, it's almost, almost reminds me of when my actor's agent, when I was in Los Angeles, I did have an agent for the acting and stuff. And he's younger than me, okay? Exactly how much younger, I'm not sure, because I don't worry about, oh, yeah, speak of a cat poop, I finally cleaned out one of the litter boxes. If uh, they do, uh, I, I figured before they start installing security cameras, there is a social service agency about, Mm, I could crawl uh, on my hands and knees to there very easily. And anyway, they have a bunch of rose bushes. So I loosened up the litter. Oh, well, I, I, I took the poop out and I flushed it. I loosened up the litter, put rubber gloves on, got a, filled up a big uh, soup pot of water, carried that to the social service agency where the rose bushes were. Then I took the litter box out. Then I took all the litter, put that around the rose bushes. Then I used the water to rinse out the litter box. Then I brought it in. This is what I was doing at three o'clock last night, three o'clock in the morning. You know, after sticking my head out the window and as ascertaining that there were no gangbangers hanging out front selling crack, you know, and uh, I had, I didn't have my mask on, but I did put my hair under a knit hat. Six cats. Now, have you gotten over your allergy to your cats? Seems to me, I remember you telling me you were allergic. And okay, granted, that was back in 2006. But uh, I know that uh, I have a, an uncle that gets shots uh, to deal with his cat allergy. Uh, he's lived with cats for the 30 odd years that he and his wife have been married. I bet they've been married actually longer than that. But anyway, yeah, I cannot imagine being allergic to cats. And I can't imagine being allergic to anything that I loved. I'm allergic to the sun, and I accept that. And frankly, I wouldn't want to be getting a tan anyway, so I don't have a problem with bathing in the sunblock and carrying an umbrella. And, uh, of course, this year, I wouldn't go. I didn't go out that much. Okay, I'm going to put the cord back in this. Where the hell is it? Okay, here it is. So, oh, I had a little bit of a snafu with my computer a couple hours ago, or more than a couple hours ago, when I was getting ready to film the video that I shot before this. The webcam shut off three times, four times, and the screen didn't totally turn off, but it was like a, a dull growing gray. And I'm thinking... I know I have about a month left before the warranty on this Lenovo expires. And I could buy an extended warranty, but I really uh, am not flush to do so. If I spent money on an extended warranty, then that will mean I will not be able to take advantage of any of these Black Friday sales. And the Black Friday sales are how I get the skincare that I use pretty much for the year. I Every year I get what I think is a year's worth of vitamin C 
and retinoids and all the different crap I throw on my face to uh, make you think that I'm only 25. <coughs> but anyway, uh, and wish order that I still want to make. Oh, by the way, I got another one of my masks, face masks, uh, came in the mail today. But I'm not going to show that to you because what I want to do is when I finally get the rest of that order, because I actually have two orders that I placed like a month ago that should be coming in more now. And I want to save a certain category of things that I ordered to make a video just about that. And I'm not going to give it up until I actually do it because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Plus, I don't want to give too many other people the idea so that it's not something that a whole lot of other people are doing. I like to get these gimmicky ideas that I think are clever. And if 100 million other people are doing them, then how clever are they? So I think I'll just keep this close to my chest and, and just surprise you with it. But anyway, when the computer started doing that, I'm thinking, no, nah, I don't need this. And uh, I'm not in the mood to go drop it off to Best Buy and not have a, a piece of equipment for a whole month, which is what happened last time. But that said, I got something I want to show you. But let me close my door first. Oh, boy. Cassie, wait a minute. Why don't you come here? Come here, Cassie. Oh, my Cassie girl. I got Cassie girl. Look, I got. Okay. Well, this isn't what I want to show you, but I'll show you her. I do have something to show you. Look what I have. Da, 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 da. Only one problem. Now, this was given to me yesterday, a gift by a friend who I shall not name. But if you are going to be watching, thank you so much. Now, here's what's up. I've never had a cell phone in my life. I wouldn't know what to do with it. Um, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to afford to get airtime for it anytime soon. But if there's an odd chance that I can use the home Wi-Fi or get it to receive any old Wi-Fi signals. And I believe they probably do have this ability so that if people have only so much of a data limit, then they want, and they want to do something labor intensive, like watching videos and things, then they could tap into a Wi-Fi thing. If I can do that with it, I would like to do that. But here's what I really want to do with this. I want to be able to have something that's much more portable to film with. So I can go do my traveling and do my filming. And instead of walking around carrying the open clamshell and hoping that I don't get knocked out over and drop it or have some Antifa or Black Lives Matter asshole fuck with me, these are a lot easier to hold in your hand. Um, so I have, I guess I'm going to have to do some searches and see about getting an instruction manual for these things. I mean, what does a person do when they've never had a cell phone in their life? There's got to be, maybe there's a book called Cell Phones for Dummies, but actually it should be cell phone. Uh, uh, um, I don't know what, what it would be, but anyway, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with it. I feel like I'm the last person in America didn't have a cell phone and I knew that it was going to be inevitable that I would need one someday. First of all, the next time I go to Washington DC in order to be able to come and go at the, my friend's house who I would stay with, um, the people that live in his building, they're not the kind of people that will open the door to let people in. And especially if they're a bunch of Trump haters, they're not going to want to open my door. And if they have Antifa living there or something, and there are no pay phones around, what used to be, you could just go find a pay phone and let somebody know, Hey, I'm on my way or whatever. And it's very hard to find pay phones. Now with a cell phone in theory, I could call and let them know that I'm there and they could go downstairs and open the door and let me in. That was one of the big concerns that I did have about Washington DC. But anyway, I finally have, a cell phone. Oh, 
So, yeah, hopefully I can find a manual for it. Uh, so, let's see, I'm at 75% of power. I want to pour myself. Oh, wait a minute. I don't need to pour another thing of tea because I have one here. And look who just came back, my tabby boy. My baby tabby boy's here. Look who's here. Oh, look. See, you were bugging me wanting that food, wanting more food. We're running low on cat food, I'm afraid. Yes. Mostly we have only a tiny little bit of this dry left. Oh, look. This is all that's in the dry food now. Oh, boy. But, you know, I, oh, now I got, hey. Get you guys both, both in here. Come on. Tabby boy, you too. Come on. Tabby boy, you, come on. Oh. Eat, 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 eat. Oh, my cat. <sighs> so, I feel so bad. For them. Uh, I'm glad the tabby boy is getting more assertive when she smacks at him and he smacks her back, but they mostly air smack each other and stuff, you know. Oh, are you going to run away? No, wh why do I bother filling the bowl up with food for you if you're not going to eat it? Oh, I keep on expecting them to have higher intelligence quotient than they do. No. So. Oh, you know, you know what else they like? Greenies. They really like these. I've never had a cat that didn't love them. Oh, and this is another kind of treat. If you guys have ever heard of it. Uh, well, actually, you can't even tell what they are. There's a whole sheet. Each one of these things is a... An individual. Here, check this out. And what this is, is I'm going to break this up into tiny little pieces like this. It looks almost like a Slim Jim. Eat. Eat it. No, no. Tabby boy, eat. Come on. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to tear this up. Oh, your kitties. You got kitties. Hello, pussy again. Oh, pussy again. That's right. You can babysit your kitties on my channel. I, I, I don't think I will corrupt them. Kitty treats. Kitty treats. Nom, 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 nom. Kitty treats. Look at this. Why won't you eat that? Hey. Tabby boy. Here, eat. Here's what I'm going to do. Put them in this bowl. Eat. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, now she's going to go eat it. You look at this. Look. Do you see that? He's like, why is she eating my food? Oh. Rock em, sock em, robots. That's right. That's right. Oh, cat fight. Cat fight. Here, eat. Come on. I can make things really interesting. Check this out. Mm. This is grain free neutro. Perfect portion. Oh, no, no, no. Mm, see what this appeals to you. Mm. Oh, it almost smells like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm. Now, oh, no, 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 no,
Ah, is that good? That's my baby. Oh, my baby. See? Well, I think I'll put the lid on the cat food thing. I think that will tide them over for at least a few minutes. So, while I go and get my notebook, because I wanted to reference some statistics for you guys because there are some other things that were kind of important that I wanted to mention uh, let's see blah, 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 blah. my trusty notebook here okay here we go and you know what I think I'm going to move this stand up desk a little bit closer just because the light's more flattering. And I wanted to mention some latest uh, COVID stats for the state of New Jersey. Now, uh, Governor Phil Murphy recently signed the Emergency Powers Act. I guess it has to be renewed every month and uh, it extends the public health emergency. And that gives them authorization to continue with the closures and the adjustments of things as as this COVID gets worse or as it you know as it fluctuates the governor changes how many businesses are open and what people can do and stuff and he some people it's like in some ways he's good that he's being responsive to the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic but where so many people have such a problem with him is in raising taxes is really unnecessary but also what this is doing this impact on the economy oh, okay i'm showing that because you know jeff they tried oh uh, youtube tried to censor that makeup by andrea hi you like my kitty oh you like my kitty yes oh this is my cassie my cassie the garden cat oh yes she's a real grumpy little girl yes she is and she's a food stealer yes she is oh yes she is so and my sinuses are going oh geez mm, 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 mm. my sinuses i should take a red pill if i have to go in the kitchen for them so, yeah, Atlanta County has the highest unemployment rate. Um, it says, oh, for the second quarter of the year. Um, that's so right when COVID hit and everything shut down. Uh, now, let's see. Here's, uh, I have to read this. Um, Atlanta County, as of November 21, 2020. Now, the stats for Saturday, this past Saturday. Egg Harbor Township had 35 cases and no deaths. Hamilton Township had 14 cases and no deaths. Pleasantville had 16 cases. Galloway Township had 13 cases and one death. Atlantic City had 12 cases and one death. Uh, Absecon had eight cases. Margate had seven cases. Summers Point had seven cases. Ventnor had six cases. Brigantine had three cases. Northfield had two cases. Now, as far as cumulative goes... Uh, Summers Point has had 208 cases of COVID-19. Pleasantville has had 952 and 24 deaths. Now, that can't be right. Yeah, 900. Northfield has had 372 cases of COVID-19 and 32 deaths. Um, cumulative as of Saturday, uh, Abseekin had 517 cases. Longport's had nine cases. Hamilton has had 956 cases and 50 deaths. Hamilton has had 680 cases and nine deaths. Galloway has had 897 cases and 37 deaths. Um, as of cumulative, as of Saturday, Absecon has, has, just so you know, has a lot of extended care facilities and nursing homes and things. They had... 517 cases. Uh, Atlantic City has had 1,084 1, cases and 24 deaths. 
Brigantine has had 430 cases and one death. Egg Harbor, uh, I can't tell whether it's township or city, because there's an Egg Harbor city and Egg Harbor township. Um, Egg Harbor, whether it's a city or town. Oh, Egg Harbor City's had 270 cases and two deaths. Egg Harbor Township has had 1,271 cases of COVID-19 and 26 deaths. Uh, I think I read the other ones down here. So, yeah, this COVID is no joke. And, uh, oh, yeah, and maybe you guys have heard of a gym called Atlas Gym that has been shut down. They, uh, and it's been on all the national news. Uh, let me see if I wrote anything about it. They have not had any transmissions yet. However, they are being fined like over $1,000 a day. So anybody can understand uh, doing what we can to mitigate the spread of a disease. Okay. That's not an unreasonable thing. But what this is doing to the economy, what this is doing to small business owners, and there's so many things that don't make sense. Why is it that a big box store is considered an essential business? And so you can go into um, a Walmart, you can go into a Best Buy, you can go into a Costco or, you know, a real big superstore. And yet, what if you wanted to go to a mom and pop store that sold something? So these small businesses are being forced to go under. I mean, they still have to pay rent. And if they're not allowed to be open for business, they can't pay rent. And this has got so these small businesses, so many of them, when they close, they cannot reopen. So many restaurants close cannot reopen. What if your restaurant is so small that you cannot even break even with 25% uh, capacity? And now there is no more indoor dining because they say it's not safe. And it's getting colder and colder. And people are not going to want to be sitting outside. The businesses that do allow, make for outside seating, a lot of times they have to have these natural gas fixtures, which means there's going to be an added expense. Plus the safety. What if somebody got drunk and fell up against the natural gas thing or burned themselves or something? So these restaurants are paying more for the extra gas for the heating. Uh, and then, of course, the people have to change you, you have to be all bundled up to be comfortable to hang out outside. And then if it's windy, and if you, you could try, can try, imagine uh, being on the boardwalk and it's windy and sand blows in your food and your hair and your eyes. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I'm just going to have to. Another thing I'm going to need to learn as far as things for video making. I know I've shown you guys my little camcorder. And it is... should be up here somewhere. Ah, right. oh, here it is. This is my little camcorder. I paid like $26 for it or something like that on Wish. It's got the thing opens up, and I've only the only filming I did with this. Uh, I have a friend, Malcolm Tent. He is a punk rock accordion player, and I filmed his set at a place called the Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall, um, like a week or so before Halloween. And I think though that when I filmed it, it had a time and, and date stamp on it, and it wasn't even the right time and date, and. I wouldn't know how to take something off something that's already been filmed. And until I figure out how to do that, I can't really use this. That would ruin any footage. Can you imagine trying to edit something together and everything had an inaccurate time and date stamp on the bottom? That just, that would not be logical. So until I learn how to take that off it, and I sure don't feel like going, I, what I do know about operating this is the information I got from the agent at Best Buy the last time I was there, the last time I was picking up, uh, you know, computers drop off. And there's no way I could read the instruction manual that came this. It was written in very broken English that was 
between my mother and myself, we couldn't figure it out. And my mother has an English, uh, she was an English teacher, a high school English teacher, so she has a college degree. Uh, so, but until I learn how to take the time and date stamp off the, the thing, I'm not going to really be able to use this. But the more of a selection of equipment I have for recording, the more I'll be able to do. And assuming that I'll still be able to put the files into a Windows-based machine so that I can edit like normal, you know. You know what? My sinuses are really getting bad. I think I need to take a red pill, so follow me into the kitchen. Oh, boy. Hi, Tabby boy. Oh, yeah, run down the hall. Run away from me, you bastard. Be like that. Okay, make sure good stove's cool. I gotta take a suit of bed. Oh, if I can find... Yes. And this is the generic version of Sudafed. And you can find these at Dollar Tree and 99 cent stores. And when you think about how much even the uh, generic... South of Heaven 88... Oh, I want to say something to you. I checked out uh, one of your videos and I think your hair is badass. So... Uh, I'm still depressed over what they're all doing to Trump. And people are trying to tell me to keep the faith. I'm sorry. I have a lot of things in my life, but it's really hard to keep up the quote-unquote faith in the face of all this negativity, all the bad news. You know, I was listening. I I'd put on Sean Hannity today, and he had some chick called Rose that was uh, standing in for him. Rose uh, Unplugged, is that what she calls herself? Okay, I don't know why I didn't bring my coffee cup in here. That was pretty stupid, so I'm going to go my coffee cup because I just swallowed a pill dry, and that's not smart. Oh, boy. And very carefully not catch that cord. Oh, because if I break that ball, I don't want shattered glass for the cats to step on. Okay, try this again. Oh, not a good place to have a lamp. Okay. Oh, Tabby Boy, you gonna where are you going? Tabby Boy. Tabby Boy. Tabby Boy, come on. I love you. Excuse me. <sighs> yes. So, yeah, the COVID is really, really depressing. And I'm still on the fence about the wisdom of going to these demonstrations and these things. I am still regretting the fact that I didn't make it to Washington, D.C. for that big Trump march. And it's nice to see that it did get some play in the media. And it's wonderful that Trump knows that there are so many people who love him. And it looked like there was wall-to-wall -wall people. It looked like this just amazing... Well, it was amazing until Antifa and Black Lives Matter started busting heads, you know. I'm glad that there was some Proud Boys to help to mitigate some of the damage. And I have, if any of you guys don't know about the Proud Boys, I had only heard about them anecdotally. I actually got to meet a bunch of them at this Demand Free Speech rally in Washington, D.C. last year. And they were, what an upstanding bunch of guys. Uh, they are not racist. Did you know that the leader of the Proud Boys is a combination of black and some kind of Spanish? So it'd be kind of hard to be a uh, white supremacist and be not white at the same time. Right? There's kind of, you know, so many people really don't know what they're talking about. And they lump all groups together and they make assumptions about things that they don't know about. They're, you can be gay and be Proud Boys. You can be you know, it's not about um, your color, your class. It's about, from what, what my understanding is, they practice chivalry. They believe that there's nothing wrong with being a masculine man. They were very supportive. They were defending us 
when Antifa and Black Lives Matters, well, actually, at that time, I don't think Black Lives Matter existed, but it was Antifa that was stalking us and was trying to find us that didn't have people around us between the Proud Boys and the Washington, D.C.'s Metropolitan Police, uh, who are wonderful. I think Washington, D.C.'s police are fantastic. I didn't always used to love cops, you know, growing up. But it's funny how the less laws you break, the more you like cops, isn't it? Of course, I think it's also funny that the more cannabis becomes legalized, the cooler cops become. And I'm sure they like that they don't have to be spending uh, time on such a minor offense when there's real crimes to deal with. Mm. Okay, I'm going to have some more teeth. Man, my sinuses are so bad. It's, it makes it so hard to breathe. Uh, and now when you go into casinos, they have all these signs about all the new COVID symptoms. And half the sinus breathing stuff is considered a symptom. And I'm sure that can't be it. Yeah. Of course, each time I get too close to somebody, I worry about whether that was my exposure. That said, I found out that a lot of uh, the uh, drugstore chains are in line to be able to dis distribute the COVID vaccine. Uh, CVS is going to be uh, one of the partners that's going to distribute it. I'm hoping Walgreens does too. Now, Rite Aid recently, most of the Rite Aids, not all of them though, but most of the Rite Aids turned into Walgreens. Our, all our Rite Aids turned into Walgreens. And unfortunately, Walgreens are much, much more expensive. But hopefully Walgreens will be one of the places that distributes the vaccine. And they're saying that the vaccine is going to go to healthcare workers first and then old people and people with compromised immune systems. Well, so hopefully since my mother is 79 years old, uh, well, no, I, I wouldn't want to get any chip either, but I do want the vaccine. Uh, and I can't imagine anybody being, I mean, I could see if you really had reason to believe that there is something dangerous in it. And if there was something in it that you were allergic to, that I can understand too. Like for instance, I'm allergic to thimerosal. Thimerosal has mercury in it, and it is often, it's used as a preservative. It's often in saline solutions, and I discovered that I was allergic to that. So I do mention to them that I would prefer the version of it that does not have any um, thimerosal in it. But the more people that avoid getting the shot, the harder it's going to be for us to get that herd immunity. Now, I cannot imagine being against all vaccines. What about the vaccine for smallpox? What about the vaccine for rubella and measles and diphtheria? All those vaccines that we all had as kids. Now, there are some other vaccines that I should have gotten in more recent years that I never got a chance to get. Like, for instance, there is a hepatitis B vaccine that I believe is two different shots. And I got the first series when I was in Los Angeles, but the next shot was supposed to be six months later, and I was on East Coast by then. And so I'm going to have to go all over again and try to get that shot. But when this happened, that was like 10 years ago, if not longer. So, and I don't have a doctor. I'm lucky to have a dentist. So when I'm going to get that shot, I don't know. But the point of the matter is if a vaccine has been created in Dr. Fauci, himself said that this vaccine is fine. And I can't imagine there's too many people that don't trust him, even though one of the things that pisses me off about Dr. Anthony Fauci is if he, whenever he is critical of Trump, but I'm biased because I'm in favor of Trump and I just don't like it when people are disloyal to him and give him a hard time. I am partisan. I admit it. I cannot be objective when it comes to Donald J. Trump. I'm a big fan of him. I've been a big fan of his for 
practically as long as I knew he existed. I saw how he was here with the casinos. Well, you know, I know it sounds a little cavalier for me to say I'm willing to take the chance, but look at what this virus is doing to people already. The social isolation, the fact that we can't go out and make new friends, the fact that, okay, if you were single before this shit hit, how can you meet people since then? The way, what this is doing with people's quality of life, fuck it. I want the vaccine. As soon as some high-profile people take it, I'll roll my sleeves up and I'll get the damn shot. If the shot's on my at backside, I don't fucking care. I'll take it. I want this thing to be over. I'm tired of not being able to go out. On the weekends, I can't go out dancing. I'm tired of not being able to go and catch up my friend's band play. I'm tired of... Everybody all you know, have to be covered in these masks. And if I think it's somebody might be really good looking and they turn around and they're covered by this mask and I can't see that interesting stranger to see if maybe they might be hot. Okay, excuse me for being young enough and single enough and I'm looking and we can't do anything because of the fucking COVID. What about people... What about that? Okay, maybe 99% recovery rate, yes. But what about my mother? What if I'm so desperate for human companionship, I go out and I hug somebody and I get COVID and I bring it home to my mother and she dies. Are we going to be that cavalier about it? I'm sorry, she may be only one person, but to me, she's my world. And if anything happens to her, I will have to get out of here so fucking fast. I will be out on the street. I will have no way to get my cats out of here. I will lose my things. I will be probably on the street, okay? This family has to be kept intact and has to be healthy. I cannot control what it is my brother does when he goes out of the house. You know, he has friends. He's still meeting girls. When he goes for walks on a boardwalk, he doesn't wear a mask, okay? And by the way, it's almost impossible to totally social distance. They say that it's ridiculous to wear a mask when there's no, you're not around people, but you never know when people are going to get near you. And around here, people dart in front of you and they get close to you and you cannot really avoid people. I can't open my front door without some ragamuffins hanging out right in front. And when I say, when I have my key, I'm getting ready to go and they won't get out of my way. And when I say, would you please give me some space? They act like I'm the one with the problem. And when I say, excuse me, I don't want to get it because I don't want to give it to my mother. They look at me like I'm an asshole. And then they will watch me. And then if they see that I'm talking to somebody and I happen to forget and I get a little bit closer than six feet, then they'll yell at me and they'll say that I'm talking shit just because I'm talking to a friend. You can't win. Oh, I got to get a tissue. Slow down. Ah. Sorry about that. I can't breathe. Ugh. I should put that on a shirt. No, nah, they already have that shirt, and it's for Black Lives Matter. And, you know, they're deifying a common criminal a thug, George Floyd. Like I said, I'm not politically correct. It's almost as if there's a religion, the fun religion. Who can we put on a pedestal, the biggest scumbags, and we're going to glorify them. We're going to have a big, huge funeral for this common thug. Oh, this guy that beats up in his wife, passes bad checks, does some raping, does some robbery, you know, puts a bloated gun up against uh, the belly of a pregnant woman when he's uh, doing a home invasion. And by the way, home invasions are no fun. I've been through two of them. And they, no guns were involved, just knives. I know what it's like to have a knife to my throat, okay? I was lucky I wasn't raped when those home invasions happened. It was still really scary, and I lost a lot of things. There's nothing quite like second. a second. You know how long a second is, right? A second can be a very long time during an earthquake. And when you're involved in a home invasion robbery, 
You think that you're safe in your home. You think that you're safe behind a locked door. You think that your bedroom door is safe. And all of a sudden, somebody opens it up with like a credit card kind of thing and puts a knife to your throat because they're a gang member and they're a junkie. And they, and they definitely, and when they want your nose ring out, and at the time I had the captive bead ring that I had only had in like a year or two, and I certainly didn't know how to take it out. And as far as I was concerned, it was permanent. And a guy wants me to take it out, and I said, I didn't know how to take it out. So I'm lucky he didn't rip it out of my head. He was this drug crazed, drug addict, I can understand, drug crazed, that, that's worse, you know? But. And there's plenty of people who do drugs and they can handle drugs and they don't use their taste for drugs as an excuse to hurt other people. I know plenty of people who are responsible drug users. And by drugs, I mean drug drugs. I don't mean pot, which is just an herb that gives you that hug from God kind of thing. I wish I had some right now. Mm. Hot tea. Okay. You know what? Oh, look who's here. Look who's here. You're, oh, my daddy boy. Oh, you are gaining weight. Which is better than losing weight because, you know, if cats all of a sudden lose weight, you know it's not good. Daddy boy. Oh, isn't he pretty? I got such a beautiful cat. Oh, you know, if I was rich, you know what I would do? I would get a little robot so I don't have to deal with certain things about cleaning up the caca and the wee wee. What, you know what's so ridiculous about litter boxes is I wish they would come with a drain and I wish kitties could be trained to wee wee on one side and caca on the other because what the hardest part of keeping a cat box clean is when it gets too wet, you know? So if they had a separate spot and you could train them to do different things, different places, it would be so much easier. Right? Wouldn't that be easier? Look at his face. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, hey. Isn't he beautiful? I have a beautiful cat. Yes, I do. I have a beautiful cat, and I give him kisses. And, okay, the battery says 52%, so I think I will go plug it in. I'm going to, okay. And hopefully not knock anything down while I'm doing this. Oh, man, I wish I could have found some weed today. I could not find any weed. Could not find a crumb. Oh, oh. good. I didn't knock the cord over. Good. Oh. Uh, Oops, spill some tea, hey. All right, now I can plug this back in. All right. So, yeah. So the temperature. Oh, Blaze TV, that's Glenn Beck's. Uh, I used to listen to him all the time. Didn't he turn into a never Trumper? That, that really disappointed me about him because I really liked him a lot. There's certain things about Glenn Beck that I really relate to. And when he talked about how he used to use cocaine and he doesn't do it anymore and he used to drink alcohol and he doesn't do it anymore, I really respect that about him. And, um, and I like the fact that he's a Mormon. I would really like to, if I ever got a chance to go on his show, I would like to talk to him about the Osmond brothers. But I'm not going to spoil it because if I ever do get my dream... You know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I really would like to meet him and talk to him about that. And uh, But I, I would also like to talk to him about something else, because I remember when the tea party had just started, and he was talking about, oh, go to Washington, D.C., but don't dress weird and don't carry any signs. We want to prove that we are respectable. We want to prove that we're not the kind of people that are going to end up being a meme uh, and be featured on, say, MSNBC and CNN and everything as, as an example of bad behavior or whatever. And the gist of it I got was to look as normal as possible. And I'm thinking, but that's not me. 
So what am I supposed to do? Go and and I didn't have a three piece suit like now. I have that suit. You know, I, I could uh, theor in theory wear, but it bothered me that there didn't seem to be any room for individuality. That they thought that what all tea party people had to look in this one homogenous way, and there is no room for self expression or creativity or anything remotely interesting. And I just I got the feeling that. I wouldn't have been wanted there. And I got the feeling that if I had been there just as myself, just wearing my mini skirts and garter belts and everything, which is just so much a part of who I am, you know, and, unless it's extremely freezing out. And if it's extremely freezing out, I probably wouldn't want to be out anyway, unless it was a blizzard or something. You know, I, I just don't like the cold. Washington, D.C. is fairly cold. If you've ever been to a presidential inauguration, they tend to be pretty cold. George W. Bush's second one that I was at, that, that I was at, because I wasn't at his first one, because while well, I was still a libtard when he first got inaugurated. But 9-11 uh, happened, and I fell in love with George W. Bush and his leadership, and that's what turned me GOP. And, of course, I have to give a lot of credit to the great one, Oh Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, I'm absolutely nuts over. I still haven't gone on his site to write my whatever yet. Uh, okay, take care. And never cut your hair, man, please. But yeah, um, I, I have to give a lot of credit for Rush Limbaugh and George W. Bush on that. But um when Trump had his inauguration, it wasn't all that terribly cold in Washington, D.C. Like, I guess it was in the middle 50s, maybe. And it was quite nice out. And by the way, on the subject of that inauguration, I have eight disposable uh, cameras that I need to develop. Procrastination, thy name is leather. Uh, I used to be I would go to companies like Clark or York and put them in the mailer and, you know, drop off your film like that. And it wasn't all that expensive. You could, uh, but now so many places just don't develop film anymore. Clark and York uh, are the same company now, and they do not do film developing. Uh, most of the uh, drug stores that used to do film developing, they don't have the drop-offs anymore. I think they may do it at some CVSs and the, but not the one here in Atlantic City, though. The nearest one would be, I think, either in Ventnor or Margate or Ventnor very close to Margate. So it would be a little bit of a haul. And, of course, the colder it gets, the less likely I might feel like making quite a long haul. And I really don't like getting on city buses right now with the COVID, considering that they don't really protect anybody but the driver on the buses. They tell people to wear masks, but they don't do anything when somebody's letting their nose stick out and stuff. And I just don't feel comfortable with that. It, it just doesn't feel safe to me. So, but yeah, I don't know. Thanksgiving's coming and I just don't feel much like celebrating. So what are we going to do? What's the public going to do? I want to know. If they try to say, once it's Christmas time, that you can't celebrate it. What's the public going to do when the governor starts saying, you can't have people in your homes for Christmas. You can't travel for Christmas. What, what are the people going to do if they start closing stores so that you can't shop and more mom and pop stores and small businesses are forced to go under? because of these draconian measures. I mean, do these lockdowns really work on slowing the spread of the virus? Depending on which uh, radio station you listen to, you may get different information. I'm reading all kinds of articles on it. I'm still kind of torn. Of course I want us to be safe. Who wouldn't? But like Trump has said and other people have said many, many times, the cure must not be worse than the disease. And if, in fact, we are being tested for our complicity. And, yeah, and the CDC has kind of changed 
Um, there are things uh, like even Dr. Fauci in the beginning, he said, no, masks are ridiculous. And then he said, I'll save them for the healthcare workers. Maybe there was kind of a shortage. Now I understand it's becoming increasingly easier to get the N95 masks. Matter of fact, I am ordering some more. Um, maybe sometime this week I'll make that wish order. I just hate having to wait a month for their um, for things to be delivered. And then when I got asked, uh, Wish sent me an email asking me if a certain thing had gotten delivered, and I said no, it hadn't. And then they said, oh, it'll be worth the wait. And then they sent me a graphic of an airplane in the globe. And it's like, you know that the stuff doesn't get there by airplane or it would have gotten there already. It's that slow boat from China. Well, and the thing is, if you're, if those are the only decent kind of masks and everything else is crap, in all these signs, I see all these signs in front of businesses saying must wear a face covering. They don't say what kind. They don't say, don't bother wearing the kinds that don't do any good. Now, one thing I did hear that gives me a little bit more comfort. I did hear that surgical masks are kind of good, not as good as N95, but they're the next best thing. Then the cloth masks, like so many people are using, and I'm looking because I, I had them hanging up here, but now they're in the hallway. They, um, the cloth masks that most people are wearing, they don't, okay, good. That's not the N95 or KN95s. Definitely, definitely, I believe anybody watching me, please do get that. And well, the ones, the two that I have that were the original ones that were given, they say 3M and they were given to me by somebody who works in the radiology department at a Veterans Administration hospital. Um, somewhere in the Southwest, I believe. And those are the two I almost exclusively, I use them because I just want to be as safe as possible. Again, I got to protect my mother, you know, and I can't see, but then on the, sec on, on the other hand, if I'm going to be someplace glamorous, like a casino where I want to be seen and be seen, then sure. I like these things with the sequins and all that stuff and um if you can add filters to them to make them even safer now one thing though speaking of china i feel kind of bad about i have been on a quest to find makeup and skincare companies to do business with that are not these multinational corporations that are poor, uh, shoving this woke consciousness on people telling people uh, to support Black-owned businesses and donate to Black Lives Matter, even though we know that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization. They promote the destruction of the nuclear family. They promote all other concepts of families. Not that they're, not that other kinds of families aren't valid, but still, there's something to be said for the nuclear family. There's something to be said for actually procreating and actually having children and especially if there are certain cultures who are dying out because of so many, much um, mixing of cultures and things do you realize that do I have a face shield oh hold that thought hold that thought hold the thought I wish it went more like this, though. But these by themselves are no good. The stuff gets at you from here. However, if you put this on top of the... Thing, all, all my masks are in the hallway. But this I got when that damn infernal ghetto church was having a shindig last weekend. Last Saturday. The music was so loud. Oh, God. You know... I'm probably going to have to wait until I move, maybe until I leave New Jersey. But there are two videos that I filmed that I made private. See, see because I'm such a small-time YouTuber, 
I don't have a lot of uh, features available to me now because I don't have that many people uh, subscribed to me yet. For instance, I can't make bulletins where I can contact you guys and let you guys know things. But there are two videos that I have that I made private so that some of the locals wouldn't find them. But I have sent copies of the video, you know, links to the video to some people that I know on also on Facebook that I could send them these the video link to so they can look at so they can know about some of the things that we are dealing with, you know, where we live here that um, are both inner, the videos I know are entertaining. They're kind of funny, but the truth is really not funny because it describes the noise that our neighbors subject us to all the time. And I don't mean just the gang noise. I mean the noise from what is underneath me. And uh, the thing is that I'm trying to not have too many locals know that I have this YouTube. Yeah, the church. Okay, I don't want to say too much of it about it. But if you know what I'm talking about, they're so goddamn obnoxious. And whenever we would complain or whenever I would complain, they would say, oh, this is God's house. I said, excuse me. Me and my mother and my brother were here for six years before you guys moved in. I still think that if my father was alive, he would have gone to the chief of police so bad. You know, but when you're dealing with, um, oh God, there's, uh, there's things that I want to say that I, for my own protection, I kind of don't want to, but I wish I could. But yeah, when you are totally intimidated by, uh, people, oh yeah, but what what I w was getting at before about how certain cultures are dying out and things that need to be said and not that many people are brave enough to say them because they don't want to be labeled as racist. But all cultures have value, including my culture. And white people are not having enough babies to replicate ourselves I never got to have children. I figured the love would happen first. And if I love somebody enough, I'd want to have kids. And that didn't happen. I didn't do my part. The white race is kind of dying out. If you guys didn't know, there's, we are not having enough children to carry on. And did you know that redheads are really dying out? That's like the rarest hair color. That's considered a recessive gene. Um, I guess unless uh, redheads uh, uh, marry, mate <clears throat> with other redheads to try to carry that on. And I'm not saying that I would want to bring more redheads into the world, not that there's anything wrong with that. But what I'm saying is that there are less and less people that are making families with people like themselves. There's plenty of black families, plenty of Hispanic families, plenty of Asian families, plenty of all kinds of families, okay? But as far as people that are actually having children now, and did you know that the more educated and advanced cultures are, a lot of times, the less kids they have? And part of it is because of the education, uh, part of it is because maybe the freedom and deciding that maybe if you have access to family planning, then you don't unnecessarily be having 10 kids. Or if you have no birth control, of course you're probably going to have pregnancy after another, after another. And there are some cultures that don't use birth control much and they have lots and lots of kids. And, uh, but as far as white people, the white race really is kind of dying out. There may be a time when there may be none of us left. And if we don't have children, even to replicate ourselves. You, they say you're supposed to have 2.2 children on average to replicate the species. And, you know, I, I think it's kind of sad in a way knowing that my, our family tree may end with me. And I mean, I'm not saying that who knows what my brother may do, but he, you know, some people have certain 
things in genetics that they don't want to pass on and you know like bipolar or whatever which i don't have but he does and you know you have to worry about those things but anyway yeah there's it's just not things are really messed up things are really messed up uh so anyway what are we going to do about Thanksgiving? Are we going to be able to? Are we going to be able to celebrate Christmas? And it's all as far as New Year's Eve goes. Did you know that the uh, that uh, so many things have been canceled now? That what it's doing to people, all kinds of performers and things. People they had uh, were supposed to make personal appearances for um, New Year's, that has been canceled. So it's really, it's really a bummer. This damn COVID, I gotta look out the window, hold on a second. Oh boy. Okay, so. I want to get Tabby Boy, but I want to take another look at him. Yeah. Here. Let's go look around, shall we? Oh, boy. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is go downstairs. Here, follow me. Uh, Actually, oops. Oh, I almost fell down the stairs. That's not great. 